The Tall Boy Experience. It's a Tall Boy Experience. We are in the green room um, at the Hope Global Forums uh, Conference with Operation Hope. And I am honored and privileged to be in front of this African American brother who has created something that, if you were, grew up in my age and in my era, you had to have one. Uh, this is the founder uh, of the Super Soaker, Mr. Lonnie Johnson. How you doing? How you doing? It's a pleasure meeting you. And it's a no, it's an honor to be in your presence. So uh, I have to ask you, why did you decide to come and be a part of the Hope Global Forum? Well, you know, when I found out about this, I was just overwhelmed. I said, this is what we need in our community. We need to understand the whole process of economic develop development and taking control of your future and, and applying resources in a way that counts and, and in a way that matters. You know, I was actually between here and Clark Atlanta the past three days because over at Clark Atlanta, NASA is in town with a um, small business development initiative to get more historically black colleges and universities involved in NASA contracting and providing a product for NASA. And of course, because of my NASA background, it was an ideal place for me to be in, uh, in, in particular because of some of the energy technology that I'm developing that uh, NASA has an interest in. So I have to ask you, um, how can we get more African Americans involved with tech? You, you're, you're, you seem to be along that space, but I think this new generation, they don't understand it. And unless you're in that creative space like that, they don't understand it. But what do you say to someone that's, that, to African Americans that, to get into this space? I would say very simply go to usfirst.org org. Um, usfirst f r s t dot org it's a um, robotics program it starts at the elementary school level and it goes all the way through high school and what it and it's a robotics competition and it allows kids to get involved and experience things building things coming up with ideas solving problems and What's really, really neat about it is that kids get excited about it. I mean, it gets you over this whole fear of, I can't do this, or this is not for me. Um, it allows them to be successful in a direction that we normally don't talk about. Right now, Georgia is literally leading the country in the number of African-American students involved in the FIRST Robotics program, primarily because my company teamed with the 100 Black Men of Atlanta, and uh, we've literally been going into uh, our community into our schools and introducing the program to them and setting up teams um, and we uh, our teams have done very well actually and I'm very proud of that. Now I have to ask you what was your reasoning on creating the Super Soaker? <laughs> reasoning? Well you know as an inventor I'm, I'm always tinkering and coming up with things and at the time I was actually um, at the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory I was working on the Galileo project as a systems engineer so I was you know, uh, uh, designing and integrating the power system onto that spacecraft and when I go home I tinker and work on my own projects and my own ideas and I had this idea for a new type of heat pump or air conditioning system that would use water instead of Freon and I was experimenting with some nozzles that I made and I was literally in the bathroom and I shot a stream of water across the bathroom and I thought to myself this would make a neat water gun I should um, I felt that since I, ha I am an engineer uh, I could use my um, training as an engineer to actually design and develop a high-performance water gun um, so I decided that you know I was get, having trouble getting people to understand or even invest in some of these hard science, more challenging ideas that I had. And I thought, you know, a toy water gun is something that uh, people could appreciate. And uh, I could develop that, license it, get some revenue, and then with that revenue, I could buy my freedom. Wow. So it's all about the freedom. The, and, 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 but <laughs> to, to you, my habit, yeah. So what was the one defining moment that said that you wanted to be an inventor? Oh my goodness, Paul. I've been, this is why I was saying the robotics program is important because it starts, you know, kids start working, they start out with Legos as small kids. And I used to play with blocks when I was a kid, I used to build things. Um, but yeah, as far back as I can remember, I've always been interested in how things work and, and interested in tinkering and building and making stuff. And we have a, I find that we have a lot of kids like that in our community, very creative, very creative, very resourceful and um, what they need is just an opportunity. 
Um, and so speaking of opportunity, that's been one of the key challenges that I've heard from this Global Hope Forum is people are not afforded the opportunities or do not know where those opportunities are. What do you say to those people, whether it's youth or even somebody, you know, in, in our generation that's looking for those opportunities? What do you say to them? Well, what I say, I mean, it's interesting because I was listening to the discussion about entertainment, rap, music, musicians, the movie, entertainment, and now what I do, technology, it's, it's actually not too different in that regard because if you can create it, then you can control it. So technology don't, knows no loyalty. If you can learn it and use it and create something unique and that's useful, then you can control what happens to it and where it goes. I have this philosophy of taking control of your destiny by creating your own thing as opposed to waiting on someone to open the door. You know, Super Soaker, you know, most people don't realize that after the Super Soaker was successful, I decided I wanted to, you know, be the king of all toy guns, right? And the only gun, other guns out there on the market were these Nerf dart guns. And I decided to go after those. So I started inventing guns that performed much better than what Hasbro had on the market at the time. And when I went and presented an entire line of uh, dart guns to Hasbro, I literally intimidated them into doing a deal because they didn't want me to take that product line to someone else. And so they had control of the market, they had all the shelf space, there was absolutely no reason other than wanting to control what I had uh, for them to do the deal. I have to ask you, because I just was I just learned this phrase today. Uh, can you tell us the importance of relationship capital? That's something that I just learned, but uh, it's literally building your foundation of friends or people that can help you get to wherever you're going. But the importance of where you've taken Super Soaker to where you are now as the inventor and creator that you are. But relationships, I, I don't think I could overstate that. I wish that <laughs> I wish I would, were better at it myself, actually. Um, you know, as an inventor, uh, as a scientist, engineer, you know, I used to, you know, when I was a kid, they used to call me the professor. But one of the things, one of the criteria for being, uh, I guess, an engineer or is sometimes, is, or professor, if you will, is being absent-minded. So I, I sometimes would be very forgetful. I wish I were better at remembering people, remembering names and, and contacts and relationships because they are important. They're important from a um, not just opportunity perspective, but from an emotional perspective as well. Because you need people. You need. I mean, it's just being here in this uh, environment, for example, and having people compliment me for some of the things I'm doing, it inspires me. It motivates me to do more. <laughs> so you you feed on each other. When we lift each other up, it's a powerful thing. I, I, we can, I can keep you here all day, but my last question is, where do you see technology going, or what trends do you see um, that are going um, in this generation? You know, the challenge for technology right now, um, you know, human beings are successful. We're the dominant species on the planet because of our ability to adapt to change. We've evolved with that skill. That's, that's what we have that's inherent with great problem solvers. The challenge we're facing now, though, is that technology and change is happening so so fast. It, it begs the question: You know, are we able to adapt? Are we able to keep up with it? We see evidence, and even in our politics, how change is having impacts that we did not anticipate, causing decisions to go in directions that otherwise they would not go. Um, so it, it, it permeates the whole um, social being, if you will, in fact, the culture. So the question is, can we adapt? You know, I, I was watching a video um, about robotics and artificial intelligence, for example. This is just an example. You know, people learn by repetitive exposure. So you know, you, you meet someone, or you learn, like in math in school, you you know, the teachers will tell you by the third time or fourth time you get exposed to information, and you you internalize it, and you know it, because that's what it takes to program your brain. Um, and you have, and we teach each other that way, right? Robots, androids, if you will, when one knows something, they all know it. You know, they all know it, and that information is. And you know, the thing, you know, one of the things I was reading recently, um, China has now exceeded 
in terms of venture capital investments in new businesses. Um, China is right now, this last year, China invested more money into artificial intelligence than the U.S. did. And so this whole thing about STEM and, you know, STEM is not just a slogan. You know, it's a call to action because if we're going to remain com competitive, we need to wake up and um, put shoulder to, 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 to the um, metal and, and start uh, moving forward in a more aggressive way. Well, to do all that, you have to create and you have to control. And this is what Mr. Lonnie Johnson said. He created the Super Soaker. He controlled the market. And that's, per that's pretty much what the Global Hope Forum is all about, bringing the synergy together. Uh, of all the people that uh, are in our community. So it's the Talkboy Experience. I thank you so much. It's a pleasure that I'm shaking this man's hand. We're gone. See you next year. See you next time. It's the Talkboy Experience. We're gone. Did you like the video? That's right. Did you like it? Hit that like button. Subscribe. Think big. And think share tall. It. Think tall boy. Yay! Tall boy.